Hello everyone. Welcome to Coffee Hour with 360 of Opera. I hope everyone's having a good week. Um, bring. I hope everyone has their tea, their coffee ready. Today our guest is Hi, Andy. <laughs> Today, hi, Viviana. Our guest is Marco Nebuloni. There, I'm gonna let him in. Hi, Andy. In Buenos Aires, Argentina. Love you. <laughs> so sorry, I have no, troubles no, with. No, no worries. Hi, how nice are you? to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you also. Isn't it weird that we're all meeting each other in Instagram lives? <laughs> <laughs> Such is <Yes>. life. <laughs> it's so good to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Viviana, who was here last week for making the connection. Um, so I was just telling everyone, welcoming everyone to uh, our coffee hour. This is a okay. new... This is our new series we started, and if you weren't here last week, last week we talked with Viviana Nebuloni, who's Marco's cousin, and today our guest is Marco. So to start, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do so that people get a sense of uh, who you are and, and why you're here? Okay. Uh, well, unfortunately, I don't use to drink coffee, so I have water with me. <laughs> I never drink coffee, not only this time. Uh, well, I am Marco Nebuloni. I work uh, as a digital communication specialist, uh, as a freelancer, and also uh, for um, the Italian Association of uh, Innovative uh, SMAS, Innovative uh, Enterprises. Uh, mm -hmm. startups. Uh, but uh, I am son and grandson of uh, La Scala uh, workers and uh, I used to write reviews uh, at La Scala shows. I go to the theater, to La Scala theater since I was very, very young, uh, a child. I Maybe I've seen hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, operas, uh, ballets and such as uh, stuff, um, concerts, for, for example. Um, my parents uh, still work at La Scala Theatre, um, and the father of my father um, worked, uh, used to work at La Scala Theatre when La Scala was rebuilt um, wow. after the Second World uh, War, yes. as uh, Viviana, um, Viviana grandfather. <laughs> she says that's why we're super nerd about opera. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The legacy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, well, in the past, uh, in that period, uh, in forties uh, and fifties, uh, La Scala was a very temple uh, for uh, European, not only Italian culture. Uh, yes. Also at this time, but. Uh, Mm, I am happy to see that uh, opera is spread uh, all over the, the world and there are a lot of very important theaters such as uh, you have in, uh, in New York but uh, also in other countries, not only in Europe, on Western cu culture uh, yeah. countries. So La Scala now is only the most important in the traditional <laughs> opera yeah. opera. And unfortunately, now it's closed due to the... As is almost every theater. Some, there, there are some good news appearing here and there. I've seen in Germany and in Austria, there's going to be... Well, and Verona is going to have concerts yes. in August, correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, Here's yes. hoping. Yes. That's some good news. I think it's good that, you know, people are looking for alternatives while we were still figuring out we're still all figuring all of this out, but concerts this summer is not a bad compromise, I think. <laughs> it's something. Well, there are di dif different uh, si situations. 
because, um, for example, um, Arena di Verona, the arena in Verona is a very big place. Yeah. And you can organize. Um, there are uh, uh, some shows that you can uh, um, see and appreciate uh, uh, by um, television, by internet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Scala Theater is a bit more difficult, maybe, right. but we'll restart in this autumn uh, okay. with a very um, big, important concert. Direct, okay. direct by Shaggy um, uh, Maestro. Mm-hmm. That's I don't know if you heard about news. it. We'll be hoping for it. So can you tell me a little bit more about uh, your family in La Scala and how was it growing up as a little kid, you know, so connected uh, to the opera world? Yes, well, <laughs> at first I'm sorry for my bad English. No, uh, it's perfect. We understand know. everything. If there's anything you want to say in Italian, <laughs> no one's going to okay. die. It's good for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Italian. La lingua dell'opera. Della La musica. lingua dell'opera. Esattamente, sì. <laughs> <laughs> Not true at all, but quite. Uh, well, my childhood maybe uh, was not uh, so uh, standard one, so uh-huh. typical one, because... Uh, uh, all time I I used me and my sisters uh, used to, to listen to her um, classical music and uh, <laughs> opera. Um, my father and my mother returning from uh, from the theater from their job their work uh, used to sing something uh, and uh, after the show to to listen to the radio or to watch to the to television, the shows, and so uh, me and my sisters uh, are, grew up uh, with opera and classical music, and I mm, perfectly remember um, some arias that my father <laughs> used to sing since I was very, very, very young. Which one? Uh, what? Ah, which one? <laughs> It's very personal, but for example, uh, arias from uh, Puccini operas, because my father really loved Puccini operas uh, from, uh, uh, for example, Turandot uh, or uh, La Bohème or Madame Butterfly. Oh, good one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> only uh, small pieces. And I, I clearly remember <laughs> that these uh, small pieces of the opera sang by... By my by my father when I was very 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 young, so uh, not a typical <laughs> childhood. And uh, of course, we went to the theater. Um, we went to the theater when we were very young, only for uh, short shows, concert, ballets, of course. But after me and my sisters um, decided by uh, ourselves. Uh, to continue this tradition and to go to the theater to see uh, operas and concerts and ballets uh, with uh, an, um, an adult uh, point of view, uh, not uh-huh. only children with the parents, of course, right. but for sure my parents uh, were very important for my opera and classical music education. Mm-hmm. And the tradition of my grandfather, of course, because uh, there were uh, stories about the importance um, the, um, of the link um, yeah. between my family and the theater and La Scala theater mm-hmm. and the opera temple no yeah and la prima, <laughs> legends yes a, a legend la prima la prima della scala in uh, uh-huh. the 7th of december uh, is the start of la scala season mm-hmm. um and uh, in Italy is also uh, the the most important day when all the country talk about um, classical music, art, and uh, opera, and uh, all the country is <laughs> lis- uh, listening and watching an opera. Uh, for yeah. my family, La Prima della Scala is a sort of Christmas. <laughs> uh, right. It's a sort of, of the most important festivity of the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
well, I, I know that for Viviana is uh, is the same because uh, there there is a parallel uh, uh, of our tradition or, uh, in the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so, how so? As you grew up, you continued this tradition with your sisters, and you kept going to the opera. How did this become? your job when did you decide you know because one of the big reasons why i i'm starting this series is to show that there's so many ways to be involved in the opera world it's not just singing obviously so how how and when did opera become your job and when did you decide you know that you would take this angle the the communication side the journalist side Okay, I don't know if uh, I decided. Mm. Uh, it just happened, maybe. Yeah. Um, I go to the theater um, very often, and one time I I decided to write a, a review, but I didn't study uh, nor music nor um, musicology, or uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't have uh, academic knowledge. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I don't uh, study uh, the the academy of the uh -huh. musicology. Uh, but well, I go to the theater very often, <laughs> maybe more often than uh, some mm -hmm. other. I just started to write to write an article, and uh, I sent uh, it uh, to um, online reviews, mm -hmm. and they liked it. Uh, it just happened, and I I started to to write um, um, reviews, very mm -hmm. simple uh, reviews, um, for uh, online uh, uh, newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, I stopped it uh, one year ago because uh, um, it takes uh, time to a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and, and to and to write reviews, uh, I would uh, restart this year, but the, the COVID spreading <laughs> was against my project. So now it's uh, <laughs> um, well, I I started to write reviews for online and digital newspaper because uh, uh, my job career uh, was and is in uh, digital communication and mm -hmm. uh, online uh, uh, and o o online uh, world okay yeah but well uh, 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 to go to the theater and uh, to write my feelings um, my point of view mm -hmm. uh, is the need uh, it was not uh, a clear um, project uh, I, I don't uh, I don't think uh, it, it happened because uh, I strong, uh, strongly wanted to. Mm -hmm. It just happened. Uh, it, just it was yeah. my natural uh, uh, behavior. Yeah. So, and how, what did you, did you study for, what exactly, do you have your own digital marketing agency? Do you work with other people? Is this something you studied or that also, kind of happened because for a lot of people, you know, such a, in such a uh, new uh, business in a way, you know, it just kind of happens because it's a practical thing that we do. Or did you study specifically for that? Is that something you always wanted to do? Okay, I studied philosophy. Okay. Um, and um, I started to work as a social media and digital specialist um, very soon, uh, really uh -huh. soon, and uh, after uh, philosophy, I studied some um, specific uh, and um, uh, where well, I, I studied some courses. I attended some classes uh, of uh, digital communication and um, mm -hmm. online communication. Mm -hmm. So from philosophy, I I discovered this world uh, mm -hmm. and I. Uh, worked at, at first as a freelance, next uh, with uh, some uh, agencies of communication. Mm 
mm-hmm. and now I am in the communication office uh, of uh, that um, uh, association, National uh, Association of Italian uh, Startups. Uh, uh-huh. So uh, it's uh, it's um, um, okay. F- from philosophy, you can do maybe everything. Yes. <laughs> Yes, 100%. And, uh, to start with philosophy and to finish with digital communication, yeah. I started very, really soon. So, uh-huh. Well, because philosophy teaches you to think and reason and just make, makes you a very cultured person so you can use that for anything, really. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you. Philosophy and music also. Uh, m- music... Uh, um, can teach you uh, two things, I, I guess. The first is uh, to listen, and mm-hmm. the second is uh, to uh, speak uh, without making noise, um, mm-hmm. find harmony. The power yes. of the uh, yes. music and the power of the silence. Uh, I think that this is a very important uh, uh, teaching of um, classical music and uh, and opera. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing when um, 2,000 people at La Scala Theater decided to make no noise and to, to remain uh, in silence and to watch and listen uh, a show. And I think this is a lesson of respect and uh, um, a lesson of... Uh, the lesson of the culture to take uh, the the right moment to speak and also to stay in uh, in silence yes 100 percent, 100 percent. uh here viviana sending us some some messages nice combo <laughs> philosophy and law plus music that's a new era different from la, la calas and di stefano period today singers and journalists are more complete well, it's, I think it's also kind of the world we live in, you know, we have uh, easier access to more things, but also we are in a way a little bit pushed to, you know, doing more things and, and you know, having to have our hands in a lot of projects, especially if we're freelancing, you know, and we don't have, um, you know, a contract, a set contract yeah. in a company. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so you work in this, uh, dig- so since you are such a regular at the opera and at La Scala, how has quarantine time been for you? Uh, have you started any new projects that maybe you wouldn't have if you had been busy with other things? Are you, um, watching I mean there's so many live streams is there something in particular that you've been watching or enjoying during this time well uh, the the fact that all opera theaters are closed now it's a tragedy for me I used to go to the theater to see opera once a week and now it's three months without it uh, it's very it's very difficult because um, uh, it's not only a, an habit, it's not an hobby. Uh, it's um, a very um, strong need for um, who loves opera and uh, and classical music um, to listen at the television, at the computer, uh, at the CDs is not the same than to go to the theater. Uh, it's a very different uh, experience. It's an experience to go to the theater, a very a strong experience. But well, this is the situation. We, can, we can't do nothing. So yes, I started some uh, projects um, with uh, some ideas that are developing. Uh, one with Mediano Nebuloni, of course. Uh, we are trying to... Um, to give some tips um, to people uh, about uh, how to communicate uh, uh, online in the field of classical music and uh, culture and arts. 
and another project uh, with uh, Valentina Volpandreazza uh, in which we, um, we talk about opera um, uh, in, by Instagram stories uh, with uh, different uh, people from uh, Italy but also other European, uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, these are two ways uh, to um, spend time uh, um, maintaining ourselves in the opera and classical music field, but waiting for the um, reopening of the of the theaters, because yeah. uh, all we need to return in uh, in theaters, and it, it, you know, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very different than to work. Yeah, it's Online. the it's the energy, the energy of the audience, the energy of the you know the actors, the singers, it's everything. I mean, that's why opera is so magical because it's live, <laughs> and we're there yeah. in the theater, you know, and we love the theater. But you know, we it's gonna be okay. And in the meantime, I think we're doing a lot of trial and errors and testing things that could work and. Um, you know, there's still ways to move and be moved. The, the Met Opera Gala, you know, was a big feat. Of course, it's not, we prefer the live gala in person, but, but truly, you know, people are really going out of their way to, to keep it going. And that's very inspiring, I think. Yes, I, I think that are mm, very important, um, uh, initiatives. Um, also, La Scala Theatre are uh, doing some uh, something uh, similar. Uh, we need, we need it too, because uh, opera theatres, especially in Italy, uh, weren't uh, uh, looking uh, to the digital uh, and uh, online uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so this crisis maybe. Uh, has the positive um, thing that force uh, everyone to use more the internet uh, facilities. Yes. Um, it, it's the only good thing <laughs> about this crisis, maybe, but it's very important because uh, I think, I guess, then that uh, next year, uh, we will see a um, lot of new things by by theaters, by festivals. Also. Yeah, yeah, and I think in a way, you know, crisis brings progress. So all of this, in a way, yeah, is pushing everyone's comfort zones, is pushing everyone's boundaries. And, you know, probably not all of it is going to stay, not all of it is going to be successful. But I think a lot of this, once, you know, we truly move back into the swing of things, a lot of this is going to stay. And as you're saying, it can be a good addition to what we already had. So if yeah. for Italian theaters, this means they're going to, you know, have a more de developed uh, digital department, filming department, and in a way, all, you know, we're going to have more access to it around the world, you know, that's a good thing. It's in addition to what we already have. No one wants live performances to go away. You know, that's not what everyone's trying to, to get. Yeah. We just want progress on top of <laughs> the past. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, also uh, Italian theaters, are very very ancient. Are the the most ancient opera theaters uh, in the in the world that still remain, mm -hmm. and um, they often are very beautiful uh, places, very beautiful buildings um, for their architecture or uh, the decorations. They are very beautiful. La Scala Theatre is very beautiful, but also San Carlo Theatre of Naples, Massimo Theatre of Palermo, uh, La Fenice Theatre of uh, Venice. They all are very, very beautiful. And uh, now theatres are um, taking photos, videos <laughs> for free for, for people and uh, putting them uh, in internet, in their websites. And uh, so everyone can uh, take a trip 
and go inside the theater, um, virtual experience, uh, but uh, very important because uh, uh, usually people uh, can't imagine how beautiful can be just only to stay in a theater, just, yeah. just only to... Just to be there, yeah. And then on top of that, you see the opera. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I'm so I'm, I'm from Buenos Aires, from Ar Argentina, and our Teatro Colón is just, it's like that, it's a palace. You go in and intermission is a whole experience in itself because you just walk around. And I mean, Opéra Garnier in Paris also, and that's part of the experience, that's part of opera. It's, You know, it's not only the art that's being done on stage, it's the art of the buildings, the art of the architecture of, you know, and, and now the art of photography, of filming, and all of that is a part of what opera is. Yes, yes, yes. You, 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 are, in a, you are in the middle of the, yeah. of the art. Yes. Not, only, not, not just music, but also... Uh, mm, paintings and uh, architectures and uh, also clothes are uh, artistic. Um, yeah, fashion, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as a communication uh, professional, yeah. um, what could you say about the world right now, especially in the arts, as far as Uh, communication and change in the way we communicate or from here on, you know, what could be progress in this digital communication world? Okay, I, I think uh, that uh, the um, classical music and opera music uh, um, world needed and need Uh, to improve uh, digital skills. Mm -hmm. And this cre crisis demonstrated us that uh, uh, we, we, need, <laughs> we need to, uh, to use internet, uh, to use it better than uh, in the past. Well, there are some theaters and some artists that are involved in uh, um, digital um, media, mm -hmm. but not, uh, it, it's not the standard. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's not easy because we are in a very high level uh, um, culture uh, field. Uh, okay, it's not uh, easy uh, to talk about uh, opera, to show opera uh, by um, internet because uh, due to all things <laughs> we, we speak about. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to find a way. Maybe uh, the, way, the correct way uh, is uh, to give uh, uh, some tips, uh, some small piece uh, to people uh, who can so um, um, have curiosity and uh, go to the theater. Because uh, the um, purpose is always uh, let people go to the theater, okay? The theater experience is, you can't, you can't uh, um, replace I, I, it, yeah. Replace, replace, but you can use all the media to let people go to the opera, to the concert, or to the ballet, okay? So we need to use internet, to use digital media and uh, um, find our own way if we are a singer or musicians or a theater manager um, to speak about our life our um, behavior also our experience our um, dreams because uh, we are in uh, in a field that, that can speak to everybody it's a very high level culture uh, field but it can speak to everybody, really to everybody. I really believe it. Uh, music is very important for the culture of my country, of course, but also for uh, the world, the entire world country uh, culture. You, you're from Argentina. Argentina also has a, 
very important. And uh, all the Latin America has a very important uh, opera and classical music uh, tradition, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that uh, in, um, um, in China, in Korea, in Japan, uh, in Arab countries, they really appreciate and love classical, uh, Italian and European classical music because uh, oh, um, also they uh, find that, that there are uh, things that speak to everybody. Yes, yes. I was just so, it's funny you bring that up because just in January, I was in Muscat, at Royal Opera House Muscat in Oman. Mm. Beautiful. I mean, the, yeah, in the Middle East, there's a lot of uh, modern uh, opera houses being constructed, you know, and very new. And but these buildings are incredible, incredible. And the people there are just amazing and and it's really this culture of classical music and it's really being developed and at the same time being mixed in with the culture of wherever they are you know in their music and in Muscat they're developing um a lot of contemporary Arab operas you know it's very very cool what's happening and but yeah exactly what you're saying we have to Go all of this, everything that we're talking about goes from the source that music speaks to everyone, and that's the basis of the community, a successful communication, right? To finding those points where music can connect to everybody. So, I have a question. This is going to be a little tricky. <laughs> so, where do you think, because I agree with you completely, you know, for me, it's opera, it's communication digital marketing, all of it is, it's, com it's about communication. So where do you think, because there was a point where, um, opera was very popular, you know, almost with, let's take Pavarotti, very much ingrained in popular culture. And after that, that somehow kind of went away and opera went a little back to this, you know, idea of something of a higher standard, something that is not for everyone necessarily. So obviously, I mean, the way I see it, it means that there was a break in the communication there. Uh, what do you think about this? What do you think that issue in communication could have been? How can we change that from now on, especially now after you know, this crisis, we can kind of, everything is kind of fair game, right? <laughs> it's not a, an easy, an easy question. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that uh, when, uh, if we start, if we really start uh, to show, um, um, for example, the back uh, of the stage, um, the life uh, of uh, the famous singers, uh, or the um, the work of the um, of the theater workers, uh, people uh, will start to um, appreciate more than now uh, classical music and uh, and opera. Mm -hmm. uh, well. Pop music and uh, uh, other uh, other kind of music uh, uh, do this. They are not better. They are different or worse. They are different uh, kind of music, but they uh, speak with the uh, audience, with the, their fans uh, directly, uh, without put uh, a distance. Okay, mm -hmm. we and you together. We have to do that, I think. We have to break the distance, the barriers, the walls uh, between the music, the classical music and the opera um, workers, experts, and the, the people, okay? Uh, everyone, everyone also who tell you, oh, I hate uh, classical music, oh, no, opera, please, uh, don't talk about it to me. Everyone appreciate movies with 
classical music soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Everyone have in the mobile classical music uh, um, ring. In classical music opera is in our life every time. We just don't know it. At the television, during commercials, there are mm, classical music uh, uh, pieces. So classical music can unite the expert, the, uh, the singers, uh, the, the players, and the, the people. We just have to uh, break the walls. Yes. It's not easy. <laughs> I don't have the solution. I only know that we have to do that in some way. Yeah, and well, then that's where um, creativity comes in and collaboration. But I think having this idea very clear for everyone, which yeah. it's not very clear for everyone yet. Not everyone realizes it's a communication issue. You know, it's not necessarily making um, productions that are flashier or have you know, a lot of sparkles <laughs> and spending money on that. It's not, I mean, that can be, I'm not saying we can't do that, but I think the core of it all where efforts have to go is into this idea of communication and why, you know, why something becomes part of the popular culture because it very much resonates with all sorts of people. Um, and Opera, I, I, there's no reason why opera should be such a niche thing. Like, yes, obviously, you know, the more you know, and the more it's definitely one of those things that you, the more you know about it, the more you love it. Uh, yes. But on, um, on a first step, you know, it should be more, uh, more normal for it to be a part of education, you know, for kids, for, for everyone really, and this a brilliant example that you gave about film and movies. I'm currently watching a show called Mr. Robot, you know, who was a, it was a very, very popular series. And the first two seasons, the entire soundtrack is opera and classical music. The director is probably, you know, a huge opera fan. And yeah, people are consuming opera, people are consuming classical music without maybe really realizing it or, or knowing what it is, but it's not bothering them when they're watching Mr. Robot, you know what I mean? So that's a great example, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it is that, is that. And people need to know more. But for example, uh, school uh, programs uh, don't let people to know more about classical music. Mm -hmm. And also um, television or newspapers uh, um, just use music, classical music, because it, it, it's beautiful, <laughs> but don't uh, teach nothing about classical music. Mm -hmm. And well, Classical music is a kind of art that needs uh, a bit more of uh, uh, passions. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Than other kind of music, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, for example, during, during this quarantine, we have time. <laughs> we have time too. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, with the proper um, teaching, everyone can appreciate uh, one, two, three hours of, uh, of opera. I, I usually uh, bring some friends with me when I go to the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, not always the same friends. Um, I like to, uh, to bring to theater people who never attended to a classical uh, music show. Mm -hmm. And everyone, everyone, really everyone, appreciate it so yeah it's not my my mind it, it, it's true say it classical and <laughs> we yeah. we just have to do a, a, a little effort and uh, yes and, uh, community, yeah community. i think this what what you bring up is also very important to know for us as opera lovers, as opera people, no matter 
in in what way you know we're in this opera family to realize that no effort is too small everything counts and exactly like if you love going to the opera you know and you have the possibility of getting tickets or whatever or invite people who have never been uh, to the mm. opera or who you know you're giving them this chance to experience this and then you know they don't like it if it's not for them okay you know you're not gonna force people but it's the exposure exposing people to it especially as communicators as artists You know, and in my experience, like, it's same, you know, I created 360 of Opera, not because like I'm crazy in my head, but because in my experience, every time I talked about Opera with someone or I mentioned that I was an Opera singer, everyone was always, I never had a negative response. I've always had positive responses and kind of people being so surprise and thinking it's so cool especially because you know i'm like a little person <laughs> so they're like oh opera it's surprising you know and but this idea of let's get rid of the of this idea that people don't like opera or that people don't think it's something interesting because i don't know in my experience it's kind of the op the opposite <laughs> You know, so yeah. if we all do Imagine. a little bit of effort, you know, to bring opera to kids, to bring someone who has never been to the opera to the opera, to show them our projects, all of that counts, you know, it, it adds up. Yes, because, well, I had the luck, in, the luck to grow up in a family uh, <laughs> as mine is, but... The, the teaching I received, uh, we, can, uh, we can give to, to, to everybody. Just uh, listen, talk about it, uh, watch, uh, experience uh, the theaters, uh, go to the shows, the concerts, the ballads, uh, uh, know also and meet also the singers and the dancers and the um, oh. stage directors. Why not? The workers of the, of the theater. Uh, it's it's very important. Well, I have to say you that at La Scala Theatre there are a lot of young um, mm -hmm. uh, young people, um, mm -hmm. more than one can uh, guess without mm -hmm. uh, without seeing the theatre. Mm -hmm. And they are from not only from the high society of Milan. Mm -hmm. They are people from all the society levels, mm -hmm. uh, all cultures, uh, all uh, nationalities also. Um, it, it's a very nice thing, important thing for the future for, of, of the theater. Yes. And also this is a, a thing that we have to talk about and uh, uh, to communicate outside of the theater, that uh, also young people <laughs> go to the theater. Also young people go to opera, to concert, to, to ballet. Yes. And it's it's not so. Um, uh, we have to we have to tell to tell it because uh, uh, usually people imagine that uh, theaters are full of uh, very old people. It's true, there are very old people who maybe met uh, Pavarotti and Callas the uh, by person, but it's full of, also of young people. Yeah. Who? Netrebko, Grigolo, yeah. uh, Diana and the other actual uh, very important singers, for example. Yeah. And also with that also comes this idea of breaking the idea that young people can't go to the opera because they can't afford it. There is always a way <laughs> to find affordable. I'm not saying, you know, okay, maybe you can't go every week but there are always especially i think you know in europe there's you know there's so many student discounts there's you know there's so many um you know under 30 under 40 options there's standing room it's not i think that's an excuse and there's especially here in the in new york There's this idea that, oh, the op and I'm telling you, like, people believe this in their heads because I've had these conversations, 
that it's impossible to go to the to the Met because it's too expensive and that broad but at the same time people go to Broadway all the time and I love Broadway this is not a hit at Broadway but Broadway tickets are far 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 more expensive than the Met you know yes if you're trying to go to the orchestra at the Met you're looking at more expensive tickets but it's a huge house and there's a lot of opportunities to go there you know as a group or to go for for affordable um amounts of money so that's also a communication issue because yeah. it's doable yeah. yeah um here is the same <laughs> okay go to the stadium to so, to see a match between milan and inter at san siro is not cheaper than to see an opera at la scala theater great example it's, yeah it's just an idea okay if you want the best place you have to pay the best ticket but it's the same at the stadium it's the same at the stadium the only difference is that at la scala there are few mm. places the stadium is bigger and bigger than uh, mm. than la scala theater mm. For sure, we have a problem about um, economical power of students and of young people in Milan, in Europe, but I guess all over the world. Our generation is more poor than our father's one uh, and mother's one. Mm, but still now we can afford a ticket, I think. Yeah, Not yeah. Before, I mean, I've would, even sometimes like been able to go for free when I, i was traveling alone around europe and you go there at 5 p.m you know for the student the student tickets and sometimes people donate their tickets there's you just gotta get creative and here uh my friend andy from argentina brings up a good point he's telling me to talk about the mozarteum which is not necessarily opera, it's more of a concert series. It's a very popular concert series and they have affordable, um, uh, they're like memberships for younger people. There's, that's also a solution, you know, getting, they have discounts for memberships and it's not just about opera. Some people also, uh, you know, because I, yeah, some people don't necessarily want to be three or four hours in the same place. So concerts are a good alternative, which is, this is what Mozarteum is. So in yeah. Milano, apart from La Scala, are there other uh, famous concert series, other theaters uh, that, that you go to or that are more geared towards young people? Uh, yes, mm, not as La Scala, but uh, <laughs> we, We have um, um, La Verdi, La Verdi Orchestra, uh -huh. uh, at uh, the um, Auditorium of Milano. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Teatro degli Arcimboldi mm -hmm. and the Teatro Dal Verme with uh, the uh, Pomeriggi Musicali Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And other little uh, theaters and companies, uh, such as the Samba Villa Theater, uh, mm -hmm. who shows um, operettas. Uh, or um, uh, Lita Theatre, mm -hmm. who sometimes uh, shows uh, concerts, little mm -hmm. concerts. Um, Geronimo uh, Theatre, who shows uh, Baroque concerts and uh, operas. And others, uh, uh, such, a, such as uh, Società del Quartetto, who, shows, uh, uh, who plays uh, concert, camera concerts and others, okay? Yeah. Uh, well, La Scala Theater has a very nice program for uh, young people. Mm -hmm. Also La Verdi, I guess, and uh, Dal Verme Theater. Uh -huh. But uh, for, um, for young people, there are discounts, okay, in, in Milan. So we, we can, we can go to, to, to the theater, not only for, for operas. Well, uh, near Milan, There are other uh, very important and nice theaters uh, with uh, opera, concert, and ballet programs, seasons, mm -hmm. and we have this for young people. Um, mm -hmm. I think about, um, uh, for example, uh, Teatro Sociale in Como. Ah, uh, yes, yes. In Bergamo. Uh, Teatro Grande 
in Brescia mm-hmm. and all, all the cities uh, around Milan have their own uh, opera and classical theater very mm, beautiful and nice uh, buildings mm-hmm. with a very beautiful and important uh, programs mm-hmm. um, i- important singers and players um, uh, plays and sings in uh, plays and uh, play and sing in, in the in those theaters uh, so not only Milan we can also accept from the from the town from the city mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so as we approach we have 10 minutes left I want to let people know if you have questions please ask your question uh, uh, now course. is the time um, N- not about Inter and Milan <laughs> I know that was a good example with the football. Um, so for me to start closing, um, I wanted to know a little bit what are your hopes uh, and, and, you know, wishes for the future of the arts and the opera world, uh, you know, post-COVID or as we, you know, keep going still with COVID especially from the point of view of a, a communication specialist and opera lover, of course. <laughs> <laughs> opera lover and uh, son and grandson of opera yes. workers. Um, first, I hope that we can theaters and festivals. This is the first thing. Uh, Next, uh, I hope that um, young generations uh, um, will appreciate more classical music uh, and, uh, and operas and um, pretend to build and uh, to, um, uh, to do new theaters. Why not? New festivals. Why not? In Italy, we quite just have uh, historical and traditional um, theaters. Um, like as uh, from the 18th century to now, uh, the, the theaters are those, okay? Um, there are very, very few modern uh, and new, new theaters in Italy. And it's a, very, it's a pity for me. We have to build new theaters. We have to uh, to invent new festivals, for example, new ways uh, to do opera, to do opera everywhere, mm-hmm. and classical music, not only, not just opera, and uh, and classical music everywhere, everywhere for everyone. These are the three things uh, I I hope and uh, I I dream. Uh, um, we and that we have to do. Of course, we have to improve the communication. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the ground. Okay? We, we have to improve uh, the, the communication of theater singers and all, all the classical music um, ecosystem. Yes, of course, contemporary music. Contemporary music and foreign, uh, foreign traditional music. Mm-hmm. I want, I need to know more about... Uh, Chinese classical music, Japanese classical music, Arab, African classical music, and modern contemporary classical music. Of course, we need to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, the, well, La Traviata. <laughs> okay, La Traviata is a very beautiful opera. I've listened and seen La Traviata, I don't know how many times, okay, but it's one opera of the middle of 19th century of, the com- of, it, of an Italian composer. There are a lot of other <laughs> kind of operas we need to, to know, to listen yes. and to appreciate, of course. <laughs> Viviana says, stop Traviata. No, I love Traviata. <laughs> But add, add, of course, like one thing I must say. La Traviata here. is the last opera I've seen before the lockdown. Oh. In- <laughs> Um, but yeah I I love what you're saying about getting to know classical music from because every culture has a version of classical music and especially absolutely I'm with you I'm so curious 
about I love Middle Eastern music and yes, Chinese culture, they have their own classical music and it sounds very different to our ears, you know, and it's something that they are more used to Western music, you know, to, to our culture than us to theirs. So I agree, it would be amazing to be able to showcase more of this world music and me as a person who lives here in the States where we have a lot of contemporary music being uh, written, which is very, very uh, cool and inspiring, you know, to be able to work with uh, librettists and composers who are alive. But I'm curious about contemporary Italian music. I would love to see, you know, more to have more access to contemporary Italian composers and librettists and people to showcase you know stories from today you know and i hope i i hope there will be more of that because i would i would consume it <laughs> yes it's important it's important also also for me well um sincerely <laughs> i love classical and baroque music more than contemporary music, <laughs> Very, more than contemporary music. But I, I usually, at, at least once a year, I go to a concert of modern and contemporary music. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a need uh, to do a comparison uh, between different kind of uh, uh, interpretation of the mm -hmm. art of the music, of uh, what music can uh, bring to people, can give to the listener uh, di different ways, very different ways. I prefer classical and baroque. <laughs> 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 but well, it's important. Yeah, uh, yeah. A tip, a tip uh, um, I, I want to, to, to give is to, uh, to start to appreciate uh, foreign uh, mm -hmm. classical music, Puccini operas are the best because Puccini uh, used to put some original foreign uh, pieces of music in uh, his uh, um, masterpiece. For example, in Turandot, the, there is a, um, a traditional uh, Chinese sing, uh, song. Uh, in uh, Madama Butterfly, uh, there are sounds uh, about the Orient, about Japan. In uh, La Fanciulla del West, uh, there are music uh, of uh, North America and etc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was amazing. Thank you. We have two minutes left. Uh, well, first, I want to thank you for your time. This was an awesome Pleasure. conversation. I wish we could keep going. <laughs> we could probably keep going forever. But to wrap up, um, could you give us uh, one tip from the communication side, you know, that we could all try to apply during this time to, you know, move opera forward? I, I want to give a, a tip of communication to everyone uh, and is uh, uh, let people listen music, okay? Break the walls in every field. Let people listen to music. Uh, this is a, a, a tip also uh, for um, uh, the parents, parents to the, to the children, but also uh, to the singers, to their friends, uh, to uh, musicians, to their family, to their friends, uh, to their neighbor, uh, to their flatmate. Uh, don't just think to communicate classical music for classical music uh, uh, fans. Uh, no, uh, this is not the way. We have to think to communicate classical music to everybody, uh, starting from our uh, children, parents, friends, neighbors, uh, flatmates. Yes. yes, yes. Agreed 100%. Please, everyone, take that message with you. Apply it. Share the music. Share opera. Share it with everyone. And you never know who can be, you know, the next fan. 
Um, so thank you so much, Marco, you. for your time. You. I hope we can meet each other soon in Milano or in New York. Oh. And, and we'll talk soon. See you. Thank you. See you. Ciao. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. A presto. Arrivederci. A presto.